Before we tackle this exercise number five, let me say a few things about the MOSFET. The MOSFET is the most interesting device. It has three terminals. Um, one we identify as a drain, the other as the source, and the third one as the gate. This little gap in here in the symbol is expressing graphically the reality that the current in the gate is going to be zero for all practical purposes and that's going to simplify the analysis of circuits with MOSFETs enormously. That current is null. What is the implication of that current being zero? Well, the implication is that the current at the top of the device is the same current at the bottom. Even though we normally call that the drain current, we could have called that just the same the source current because they have the same value, but we don't. Normally we call it just that, the drain current, both of them, just to emphasize that there is only one current flowing from drain to source. More, that current is a current that we can control. We can decide the value of that. We can make that current be whatever we want it to be, regardless of what is connected to the DS circuit. Yes, it behaves as a current source that we can control. Control with what? Control with this voltage. The voltage between the gate and the source. As long as that voltage is higher than a critical value that we call the threshold voltage, that transistor behaves like so. That transistor has a current here that is proportional to the square of the distance between VGS and that threshold. Absolutely. Oh, and this, uh, this constant of proportionality is what we call traditionally one half of K n for n channel transistors or kp for p channel transistors ah, but more this kn is written very often especially by physicists or um, integrated circuits uh, analyst as the mobility of electrons multiplied by the capacitance of the oxide multiplied by the width of the conduction channel divided by the length of the conduction channel and you must be thinking holy moly and I'm telling you holy moly indeed in exercises we're given all those values or some of them in this case in this exercise the value KN is given 2 milliamps per volt square this factor hmm Sometimes we're given the product mu C and the ratio W over L that is called also by name. That is the, the form factor of the transistor. Those are just jargon in names. The fact is this one. The proportionality of that current to the square of the difference between this voltage and that threshold of voltage. Let's see what it looks like. That current has a parabola kind of dependence on VGS. That current. Oh, uh, that subscript is a bit too big. Uh, that current starts here at VT and rises in a parabola following this law. Mm, that current is zero for VGS less than this one. Uh -huh. Okay, so we are ready to analyze this circuit. Knowing all of that, the current in the gate is zero, and as long as this is true, there is current. More, more, more. For this to be true, there is one more condition that needs to be applied and I'm not writing that there. The condition is that this voltage between V, D and S has to be bigger, greater 
than this one, than this difference. That difference is what is called the overdrive voltage. Has to be this. But we have seen that before. When that is the situation, we say the transistor is operating in its linear mode, in amplification mode, or in saturation mode, which is the same. Let's not be confused with the BJT uh, being a short circuit in saturation mode. No, most fans in saturation are working as amplifiers. Now we can solve this circuit. And here it says, the portion of the circuit to the right of the capacitor, this one, is used to bias the MOSFET. What does it mean to bias the MOSFET? Well, it's used to guarantee that these conditions are holding that VDS, this voltage between the drain and the source, is greater than the voltage VGS, this one, VGS, minus VT, which is given VT is 1 volt. That is the purpose of those four resistors and this power supply at the top. In the bias circuit, we are working in DC. In DC, the capacitor behaves as an open circuit, and all the left of the circuit is irrelevant. Let's remove it. Let's read the exercise. We are given the value of the power supply 9 volts, so this point is at 9 volts, and so is this one. The parameters of the transistor, the threshold of voltages, given, let me write them here, V threshold, it's an N type transistor, is an N MOS, is 1 volt, and K is 2 milliamps per square. Mm, milliamps per square volts. They are also telling us that the drain current is one milliamp. What drain current is that? This one. This current is one milliamp. But because what we saw, because we know that this current is zero amps, that signifies that one milliamp is also flowing down here, not as an approximation as in the BJT but as a reality, it's one milliamp. What else? One third of the power supply, that is three volts, is across RD and RS. And so we have three volts here, three volts, and also three volts here. That is part of the data given to us. They are giving us VS, the voltage of the source, is 3 volts above the reference. Let me write it down here. Vs is 3 volts. What else? Well, some of the data we'll investigate in a moment. With that voltage across and the current through it, we can determine the resistance using Ohm's law. Rd has the same value as Rs, same current, same voltage, right? And that is 3 volts divided by the current, 1 milliamp, that is 3 kilo ohms. Okay, check and check. What else? Well, let's move on. We know here the current, uh-huh, and we know that in the current, if the transistor is in saturation mode, and I'm assuming that, if that is so, the drain current, is going to be one half Kn that multiplies VGS, this voltage, how much higher D is than S, minus VT, which is a one volt in this one, and all of that square. But that is true only if, that is true only if, and we have to prove that VDS, this voltage here, is greater than this voltage, greater than VGS minus VT. If that is true, this is true, and we can apply that. Let me assume that that is so. The current is 1 milliamp, and that is equal to 1 half Kn, that is 1 milliamp per volt square, that multiplies VGS, I don't know what is VGS, I don't know how much higher G is than S, I don't, 
I'm going to compute it. Minus VT, the threshold of voltage, O1, and all that squared. In this equation, we determine VGS. When I solve this equation, I get two possible values, either 2 volts or 0 volts. Of course, if this is 0, it's going to be less than VT, and uh, the transistor is in cutoff. Absolutely not my situation. There is current in the transistor. It cannot be in cutoff. So VGS is 2 volts. I write, so VGS is 2 volts. That signifies that G is higher than S by 2 volts. But the height of S above the reference is 3 volts. It's given. Oh, well, that means that VG is VS plus VGS. That is 3 plus 2, and that is 5 volts. That is the height of this point G above the reference. Now I move to computing this part of the circuit. Ah, it says over here the larger of this resistor, RG1 and RG2, is 22 mega ohms. Which one will that be? Well, let's see, VG is 5 volts. 5 volts is above half the value of 9. So, we are obtaining VG by voltage divider, right? Because this current is zero. And VG is more than half. That means that this is greater than the one on the top. This has to be 22 mega ohms. And what about the other? Well, let's see. 5 volts, which is the voltage of G, according to this, 5 volts. That is given by a voltage divider of 9 volts times 22 divided 22 plus R G 1. That is an equation you can solve in your calculator right away and it tells you that R G 1 is 17.6 mega ohms. And with that we solve this exercise. But before leaving we have to prove that we were right in assuming that this transistor was in saturation. We haven't done so. Why was that? Well, we have to prove that VDS is greater than the over voltage. Sorry, than the overdrive voltage, this one. Well, what is that overdrive in this case? Well, VGS is 2. VT is 1. If V overdrive is 1 volt, we have to prove that VDS is greater than 1 volt. Well, let's see. Let's see. We know VS already. It's 3 volts. Yes, that's right. And we know VD. Oh, it was almost given to us. You see, VD is lower than 9 by 3 volts. So that means that VD is 6. Ah. That signifies immediately that VDS has to be 6 minus 3, 3 volts. We say VDS is 3 volts. And that is greater than VGS minus VT, which is 2 minus 1, 1 volt. It's in saturation, and everything, saturation, that we've done is true. Let's see, we computed every everything. Thank you very much.